Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to use hierarchical cluster in R. So let's import some libraries. And I'm going to use a data set that I have created. It's called Foodbank that you can download in my GitHub account. And you can see in the description of the video. Uh, let's take a look at the data. The points there are the coordinates in the map of Madrid corresponding to different locations of the food banks. So we have 41 observations and you see a couple of coordinates V1 and V2. So first of all, let's visualize the data. Data, this is going to be V1, V2. So here we go. So you can see the coordinates there. And we want to cluster them. Of course, as I was saying in previous videos, for, for our brain it's kind of easy, but there are some subjective decisions that we have to take. So you could say that this is one, two, three, maybe four, five, six clusters, or this could be one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. So even for our brain, it's not that easy. So if we want to create a dendrogram, we need to define a metric. So let's create a variable called dd, and it's going to distance the data, and let's call the function dist. You can see that we need a data frame here, and also we need to decide what type of distance. In this case, I'm going to use the Euclidean distance, which is the the, the traditional one in which I have the square root of the sum of its coordinate, the, the difference of coordinates squared. Okay, so let's include that and let's take a look at this this variable. This is a lower triangular matrix in which each element is a distance in defining the plane. Okay, so now let's create a seed if you want to replicate that. Although you can download the code from my GitHub account. Okay, let's create now the hierarchical tree. So let's define a new variable called hc. And we're going to call the function xclass. You can see here that we need some data. And now we have to decide the method. Remember that we, we saw different linkage methods like single or complete or word. So let's start with the, the default value. Let's say this is the, the distance matri matrix that we have to use there. And then the method. Okay, let's be creative. Let's use instead of the, the basic one, the complete one, let's use word d2. Okay, now we can plot the tree. And you see this sort of representation. If you want to have all the leaves at the same level, you can include this argument hang equals minus one. Okay, the, 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 the one that you prefer. And also we can remove the label, so I think it's easier to read. So here is our dendrogram. And now we have to decide which is the, the, the largest leap between horizontal line and horizontal line. So these are too close. Here we have a kind of a large jump. Here we have probably another large jump. This is a small, this is a short, sorry. And this is a huge jump. So probably we're going to cut there. Okay, this is a visual inspection of the data. But if we take a look at this variable, hc, that we have created, created, you have different ingredients inside. For instance, we have a height. And this is a measure of the distance between these bars. So you can see that the highest one is this two corresponding to this line, and the lowest one is 0.03, which would be probably one of those lines uh, below. So we can do a bar plot of this variable, hc height, and let's see the labels, horizontal labels. Okay, that didn't work, but you can see that you have this increasing number of bars. We can also try to plot the difference, the derivative of that graph, in order to see the, the jump, okay? And you can see that the jump is highest at the second level. And this goes pretty well with my intuition before. So I said that the, the largest leap is going to be this one. So probably we're going to cut there. And if you go back to these bars, this bar corresponds to this, sorry, to, to this difference. The second bar, which is the largest one, and, and taking the derivative here, as you can see, corresponds to the second one, the, the chosen one. Now we have a, a small jump corresponding to these two lines pretty close and so on and so forth. So you can see again that the winner is cutting in this direction. So I would say that the, the cluster size that wins this competition is k equals three. Okay, you can do more fancy stuff like for instance doing this automatically, but let's move on a little bit. So let's define now, let's extract the clusters and to extract the clusters, we need to use the function cut tree, which is cutting the tree at a different level. So let's take the variable that we created with h cluster and now let's define the, the cluster size in this case k equals three okay so let's take a look at this variable you can see that we have a list and the number of elements of the list is the number of rows in my data set and we can also make a table so we can see how balanced is this clustering so we see now three clusters one with 13 elements 17 and 11 elements okay so this looks like a very homogeneous the classification. There are different libraries to visualize this. I like in particular one library which is called, uh, I don't remember, 
the index 10 and this has this function sorry you, you can create a color tree so let's define xc call which is a variable color branches and now we need to to include transform this as a dendrogram dentro of this classification with k equals 3 okay and now you can plot hc calls and you have the dendrogram colored by the number of clusters that we have decided okay so this is a nice way to present your diagrams although the sky is the limit and i'll show you in another video how to do more fancy representations of hierarchical trees okay one other thing that we can do is is create a rectangular plotting around this diagram so let's call the function rect h class and we're going to use the classification that we've done k equals 3 and then let's say border equals blue and now you can have this these groups and you can see that the cats is here which is the average value between this line and this line so actually you can program yourself this sort of representation but, but okay this is a nice way to see that the cluster is pretty ba is well balanced because the the width of these blocks are is more or less the same okay we can also try to use ggplot to to represent that this idea so let's define a new variable called color and then we're going to create a factor which is going to be the cluster that we created above remember that this cluster has one element for each of the ingredients okay and now again let's call ggplot v1 v2 sorry v1 v2 and color is going to be color okay so these are the three clusters that that automatically we have decided to to be the, the best the, the ones that improve this classification using this hierarchy we also can use other metrics like the silhouette method that we covered in another video so let's use these clusters and let's use the metric that we have defined before and now again facto extra i think it's going to be yeah, in the end it's going to be useful visualize the silhouette and you can see that we have three well balanced clusters so the thickness is pretty good and the mean value is 0.55 which is not bad and you can see that all the three clusters are above the red line okay so i would say that this is a good way to 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 be sure that the three the decision of taking three is pretty good again we also can use brute force and we can do an mb class algorithm mb class so remember the syntax was kind of uh, tricky so we have to define the data i'm going to remove the third column that i have just added that just for the sake of convenience and now we have to, to say different things remember in this case distance we can do whatever we want so we can use actually again word or simply use euclidean just to compare different metrics the minimum number of clusters that we want to try let's say is two and the maximum number of cluster let's say i don't know eight for instance and the method is going to be complete so we are replicating the same as in the in the dendrogram before and now show me the 30 indexes that you have implemented in this mb class function okay so here we go sorry index all okay so the summary is that according to the majority rule the best number of clusters is three that goes well with our previous calculation you have different metrics here so the, the elbow method would say that this is five actually you can see the elbow is around there okay so you have different possibilities and this is because uh, if you take a look at this silhouette method or different methods related to that you see that the maximum is at three but then you have a local maximum there which is at five okay let's represent this and be fit and here we go you can see that the winner is three but five is also a good candidate um, my suggestion there is that whenever you have two choices that, that are comparable according to these methods don't just stick just to one so try a couple of them so, so you can be more confident that what you are doing is is correct okay so let's visualize this data color now is going to be this factor the bit that we have just done and let's take the best partition sorry the best partition okay now let's ggplot this v1 v2 color equals color and now according to this oh uh, sorry this is oh the best is yeah the best of course is three so we have a similar representation there but manually we can we can try to to reconstruct that so remember that we have to cut the tree 
What is this? A cure. So let's cut the tree in five. And now again, let's define the color. What is this here? According to this variable cluster. And here we go. Here, here you have the five clusters that are probably the second best choice. So to, actually to my brain, I think this is a better solution than the other one. But you can see that sometimes our brain is cheating us. And in the other hand, we have some quantitative way to decide. This video is already long, but let me, I don't know, show you some alternatives. So let's play a little bit with different metrics and linkages and we can compare. Again, the idea is that you make your own mind and to, to decide which method is best. Okay, so I'm going to change the metric. So we were playing with different metrics in at different points. Okay, so now let's use again the data. I'm going to remove the third element of the data and the method. Let's try different methods, okay? If you take a look at the help, you have a couple of functions. One is included in facto extra, and the other is the basic R function. I'm going to use that function. And you have Euclidean, you have the maximum distance, you have the Manhattan, which is basically, instead of the square root of the sum of squares, is simply the, abs the sum of absolute values, okay? And then you have other which are specific for hybrid or binary decisions. So let's play a little bit with those. Let's start, let's repeat, replicate our result with Euclidean again. Euclidean. And now remember HC, HC, cla HC class, HC class, yes. Uh, this metric, and then let's play with, let's start with single. And let's replicate all the possibilities. So again, if you take a look at the help, we have different choices there, so we have the single linkage, we have the complete, the average, and a couple of words, and the median, okay? So those are the most popular ones. So let's start with Euclidean single, okay? And now, let's cut the tree. Well, let's plot the tree, I would say. And here we go, okay, let me remove this. This is something that happens after you use uh, this function mb class. Okay, so here is our tree. Again, if you don't want to see the labels, you can say simply that labels equals false. And if you want to the leaves to go down, you can you can use this parameter that I've covered before, hang equals to minus one. Okay, so here is the tree more or less, and and, and again you have to check individually w which lines are better than the others. But you yeah, now see that the, this diagram is slightly different from the one that we plot before. So we have a lot of singletons, so, so let me actually let me show this. Uh, hang equals to minus one. So you have a lot of singletons whenever you cut. So if you cut here, you have a very small clusters and you don't like that because in the end, what you want is to have something which is more homogeneous. If you took a take a look at the, at the heights, so let's do a bar plot of HC height. You see that you have a huge gap there and this is probably going to be the, the largest difference in, in all the data sets. So if you count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means one, two, what, so sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the largest cut. And if you cut here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clusters. So according to this method, the k equals seven would be the, the better, the best choice, which it doesn't make much sense to me according to the data. But let's take a look at the, at, at the, at the plot again. So let's cluster, uh, well, let's copy this part. It's going to be the same over and over again. So let's cut at k equals seven, and here we go. So this is the partition. And of course it doesn't make much sense because this point is should be clustered there and these two points probably with this other cluster, okay? This is a consequence of this single linkage. So this is one of the parameters that has the highest impact. Let's replace now for, let's say, uh, word d, which is the other parameter. Okay, now let's take a look. Sorry, first, let's take a look at the tree. Now it's clear that the largest leap is at the second step. So again, if you take a look at the data, that means that it's going to be this cut. Again, it produces k equals three. So here we go. So we have the basic, basically the same, mm, the same criterion as, as above. Now let's take a look at this. Let's try Manhattan. Manhattan with things like that. Okay, let's plot the tree, and now you can see that the different the, the clusters are more homogeneous, and that's a good sign. Let's take a look at that again. The second 
the second bar is the huge is where you have the highest leap and that corresponds again to three clusters i don't know i don't remember more so let's play with uh, maximum i think was the other one and again if you take a look at the bar plot again the jump is highest there now let's combine maximum with complete just for the sake of, of fun and again now it's more balanced again and let's take a look at the bar now it's harder to tell probably again is the second one followed by this one and that means that we have a couple of possibilities k equals 3 and k equals uh, 4 so let's plot them so that would correspond to k equals 3 and that would correspond to k equals 4 and actually it doesn't look that bad okay also if you go back to the bar plot we could also have chosen this one but in this case we only have a couple of clusters so let's take a look at that and okay it doesn't look pretty nice because i would say i, I don't see so clearly that these two should be joined together okay so now the end of the video and i, I think this is an invitation to do your own analysis